In this video, we're going to look at Derek, a maintainer bot that I wrote for GitHub. Now, Derek's purpose is to free you up so that you can concentrate on building and running your project. He can empower your community by allowing you to delegate tasks off and also allows you to automate some of those repetitive tasks. So let's take a look at how he works and get a quick introduction to. So let's talk about Derek, the maintainer and community bot for open source projects. In this talk, we're going to look at why would you even need a bot, get an introduction to Derek himself, there'll be a demo so you can see exactly how he works, and then we look at the current users and what they are using Derek for. We'll then look at what's next and how you can get involved. So this is what Derek looks like. Somebody has submitted a pull request and he received an event from GitHub. Immediately, he was able to analyze that. And then as you can see, he's added a label. So he's taken an action and he's also put a comment there to help the person figure out what's wrong and how to resolve it. Now, if you have an individual project, you may be, you may be thinking, well, why would I need, uh, why would I need a bot? Well, at the moment, there's only two options for collaborating with people. You either give them full right access or you give them no access. <clears throat> the same is true at an organization level. So if you create an organization on GitHub, the only options are read or full right access. And that may not make sense for a lot of people. For instance, if you're running a project and you're interacting with people outside of your work organization or you're doing this in your free time it could be hard to get to know people and to fully trust them also you may have people that actually you, you really trust but they don't feel comfortable having full right access to the repository so here's some of the tasks that maintainers and collaborators may want to do on a day-to-day -day basis working with pull requests and issues opening and closing them locking conversational threads Often you'll get an issue that comes in and the title says something like this just doesn't work on Windows and you look at it and you find out that they've not followed the installation guide and you maybe want to edit the title to make it look less dramatic. You can add and remove labels. And then sometimes, you know, the other tasks that you do is checking that people are following your contribution guide. Do you have a, a CLA or a DCO? that you have to have done for every commit or for every contributor. Well, these are the kind of things that you can automate and that Derek can help with. Now, the last thing that I've added there is automatic labeling or triage. So it may be that as soon as you get an issue, you're looking at the keywords and applying labels so that people can come along and they can help you out with that. So, what would be better than root access? You imagine write access is kind of like having root on a, on a system. Well, this is why OAuth and granular permissions exist. The trouble is right now that you cannot give that to a single person. You can give it to a bot or an integration. And so these are the permissions that Derek asks for. Read your code, read your metadata, and then write to issues. Just what you'd want to give to your everyday contributors. You can also pick from the UI whether you want that to apply to all the repositories in your organization or just one or a couple. Now that is probably quite refreshing to people that are used to rolling their own integrations and bots, but this can be fully driven through the GitHub UI. You get a new project, you just come to this, this page and you click on it. That's it. No config files, no passwords, no rebooting services. So let's get a quick demo of exactly how Derek does DCO checking and issue management. So this is one of the open FAS projects for Kubernetes and this user has raised a pull request and there's actually a clue that he probably didn't follow the contribution guide which is that it says patch one. And this is what you get when you edit code directly in the UI without following uh, a proper git flow. We look at OpenFAS and we have a checklist here and one of the things is I've read the contribution guide, I've signed off my commits. Well the contribution guide tells you how to do this and it looked like the person actually hadn't done that because Derek's come along 
And he said, well, well, look, I've checked. It's not signed off. That's something we needed to do. Can you follow the guide? And when you click on that, it will give you the full instructions on how to do it. He added a label of no DCO, which you can see just here. And then politely, um, I will interact with him if he doesn't get the message. Quite often what I found is that once Derek gets involved, people just figure it out and they, um, they fix this up for us. So here's a issue on the main FAS project raised by uh, contributor Ken. This is to do with the UI. And so what he's done is to help us see the work that he's doing and where that fits in. He said, Derek, add a label UI. And then Derek's come along and he's done that for us. And we see that over here. Now I, I have full right access, so I can just click any label I want. But most of the people on the project don't and don't want it either. And so they can very quickly add labels in this way, open and close issues. So I'm just going to add another one here, uh, priority middle. And we should see this almost in real time. The event will kick off and then Derek will handle the event. He'll figure out if there are the correct permissions for the user. And then here we go. So up at the root of the FAS project, we have a .derek YAML file. This lists the maintainers. There's Ken. There's me. And then the features that we want. So if you just want the commenting, that's fine. Now, another project that's using Derek is Docker's Mobi project. And the reason why this was so um, useful for Docker was because there are around 60 Docker captains who are a mix of technical and non-technical folks. Some are meetup organizers. And what this allows us to do is to grant them access to work with the issues and, and pull requests without giving them full write access, which is actually quite scary. And to get full write access, Docker mandates that you should have two-factor authentication. Well, this is a great way of just bypassing those restrictions and just allowing people like Laura here to be able to comment on issues or even myself. So in summary, Derek is about automation and he's about saving you time. Work on any project. So he will help you enforce licensing and contributor agreements if you need that, that's optional. You're empowering your community, just like we're doing with the Docker Captains project. Um, it's open source and value simplicity. So there may be other bots that you're aware of. I know the Kubernetes project has their own, but this is really designed to be simple to work on, simple to deploy and run, and anybody can use it. The contributions are welcome, and I'll tell you a few things that we're looking at in a minute. It's fully hosted, but if you want to, you can run your own and have that unmanaged by the project. You can take your own, fork it, run it on your own server. And it's opt-in per repository or as a whole organization, which again means that you can control exactly where you want this to run. So who's using Derek? Well, OpenFaz is using Derek right now across all of the main organization and repos. Um, Puppet have asked to use Derek too. They are really keen on the auto labeling that can be done. And as I said, the Mobi project. So if you are working on the Mobi project or you want to get involved, speak to um, Sebastian um, Zajetsa is his GitHub name and he can help you out with that. We can actually raise your own pull request to the Derek file. So just to wrap up, this is what's coming next. Well, we're going to look at automatic labeling, pushing messages to a Slack channel when people are making use of Derek, just so you can monitor it. And there's the code at github.com Alex Ellis Derek. So if you actually just want to try it out, you should install the GitHub app via the URL just here. You then need to opt in to either a single repository or the whole organization, create your own doc Derek YAML file in your repository and then put a pull request in to our customers file within the Derek's code base. If you've got any questions, you can get in touch with me and I'll help you out with this too. So thank you very much.